What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? This is Reem Bing. Welcome to another episode of Live Video Game Hunting, the series where I show you all these awesome finds, whether it's through flea markets, yard sales, or apps, or thrift stores. We go just about anywhere we can to get these awesome games for an excellent deal. Got to announce the winner to last week's giveaway contest. That winner is Maverick024. Hit me up on Instagram. You got $20 store credit to my eBay store, where not only can you get games, you can get just about anything. If you want to be entered for the next week's contest, all you got to do is be subscribed to the channel, hit the thumbs up button, and leave a comment down below. Hopefully something positive. If you want a little extra credit, share these videos so other people can see these awesome finds, learn how to beef up their collections. Links to everything in the description below. That's where you'll find the eBay store link. Macari, where I sell a bunch of consoles, mainly to all the subs out there. Um, you got my Twitch account information, PO Box, and Instagram if you've had any questions. I'm so excited, guys. This is one of my best weeks I've had in a long time. I want you to sit back and relax. Let's shekel up. Hey guys welcome back hope everybody had an awesome week as always let me know what you found whether it's good or bad i always like to hear what you guys get so we're going to kick things off with a bang and this first deal you're going to see is through let go and this was a it was a weird kind of pickup he had individual listed games he had that sonic and knuckles which is pretty obscure to find not the cartridge but to have it complete in box which it was it's kind of valuable and it's one that I needed in my collection but he had all this stuff listed individually and he didn't have a price instead it just said negotiable now typically when people list things as negotiable or they don't put a price it's because it's all individually priced and it kind of just pushes people away when they see such a high listed item but he posted a huge lot of loose Sega Genesis games that you see right beside there and it also said negotiable so I went ahead and took a chance and I said hey man how much did you want for that lot now this is where things kinda got a little weird because I asked him how much he wanted for the lot and he says you know what you can have all these games plus the ones in the boxes for sixty dollars and, and you know when looking at this first picture it was just the loose Genesis games but there were some amazing titles like the adventures of Batman and Robin and Alien Storm and many others and when it finally clicked in my brain exactly what he was talking about, because for whatever reason, I just wasn't thinking. And I thought to myself, oh yeah, he's got all these other individually listed Sega Genesis games, such as like X-Men 2, which is, is, it's terrible that, I don't know if it was him or someone else, they ripped the front cover off the original box, because it did come in the cardboard box, and they put it in this clamshell case, I don't know, maybe for protection, but it had the manual, the cart was very nice, and complete in box, that, that is... A shame that that happened to it but you know what that is still a phenomenal deal on all this I mean all the games that I'm getting right here for $60 all together this was definitely a very good start to the week and it got me thinking uh, no wonder he had everything listed you know as negotiable I guarantee that if I sent him a message on one of these games that he had listed individually he probably would have said five dollars regardless of the title but I think that's why I was able to get this because it just threw a lot of people off and they probably weren't even wanting to give it a shot just to see what the price could actually be. Now after we set up the deal on the Genesis lot, I asked him if he had anything else. He says, well I got some PlayStation stuff you can go through. And this is a good way to gauge pricing because keep in mind I have no idea what's going on in this dude's mind when it comes to pricing this stuff. Especially whenever I asked him after he sent me a picture of some of his PlayStation games, I said, well, how much are they? He said, it, the prices vary depending on the game. That is something you never want to hear because it just leads to individual prices. But in this situation, I don't, I honestly don't know. Maybe he was thinking newer games might be more, um, you know, if he had anything like PS3 or anything, which there wasn't in there. But I, I just had no idea. And I picked out Spyro specifically. And this is a good strategy. Whenever you're out anywhere, if you want to gauge someone's pricing, pick out a game that you know the value of. Ask them how much they want for it. If it's on the mark of retail, then you know that it's probably not going to be worth it uh, to even try. But if it's you know severely under, then you got a good chance. I asked him how much for Spyro, and he said $5. So I was like, I'm going to bring some extra cash and see if I can find anything else in this bucket of PlayStation. 
I tell you, it's kind of funny whenever I I watch this footage as I'm doing the narration because I'm 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 remembering everything, and memory and me do not go together that well. A lot of people know I do not have a good memory, and it's funny because as I'm sitting here thinking about it, I paid sixty dollars for everything. It was the Genesis lot as well as two games you're going to see me pick out. One being Spyro, and there's no no need to go back and redo the narration. You're hearing it now. And a lot of people on Instagram or anybody who tries to hit me up on social media, they know my memory is terrible and they kind of constantly remind me uh, of things that are going on. But $60 for this this deal, this, this was a phenomenal lot right here. Battletoads, and you saw, I don't know if you saw it actually, Battletoads looked very rough. It, there was one cartridge that had like cutouts on the side, like someone grinded it down. And actually that was Battletoads, he's trying to explain it to me in... In the video you saw earlier that he swapped the board out and put it in that one. I had no idea what he was doing, but we got it tested. It's working. It's Battletoads. The, the label just looks trashy, but man, it's crazy watching this stuff and, and remembering it. You know, it's, it's just memories that I have when I'm able to add games to my collection. I like having these videos because I can watch them and see where they came from. It's, it's just a, a unique experience. And the other game that I don't think you really get, got to see that well was Gauntlet 7 Sorrows for the PlayStation 2. I picked it up because for whatever reason I just thought it was, it was it was worth more than what it was. And it wasn't. I mean, it, it's hard to remember exactly every single game out there pricing-wise. I'm pretty good at it. Uh, my memory is on point when it comes to that for the most part. I can spot a diamond in the rough fairly easily. And of course I miss things, you know, everybody does. Uh, but that's okay, $60 for all this, and you'll, you'll see that I got some amazing stuff in the final recap at the end. I don't know what it is about a yard sale where everything is just kind of like, it's a mix between things on tables and things just thrown out on tarps or in boxes on the ground. And I love boxes on the ground because people didn't want to take the time to go through it or they thought that stuff was usually the, the lesser expensive items, so you usually can get that stuff dirt cheap. So a lot of times... I'll glance at the tables and then I'll, I'll head right to the buckets, man. Because I'm telling you, you can find some killer stuff in there. I have found totes of games. And no totes here, unfortunately. But you do see this plug and play. And I don't know what it is, but pl plug and plays are not necessarily quick flips. But they're easy flips. Uh, I can pick them up. I normally don't pay more than a dollar or two. Um, if it's something, you know, kind of crazy, obscure, Spider-Man, things like that, I might go as high as three. But I picked up that and this Price of Right Seal game, and I paid a dollar for both of that. Uh, these are just excellent flip items, and it's just more money that goes right back into the collection. Don't ignore everything you see at a yard sale. If you see it on, you know, on a tarp or in, in a bucket, go over there and start digging in that bucket. You never know what you're going to find. Here I didn't find any crazy heavy-hitting titles or systems, but hey, I got an extra $20 in my pocket, and it only cost me a buck. So here I am at a community sale on Saturday, and this was my first pickup for that day. And what, what was odd about this is this was a sale that I've never been to, which is odd because I've been doing this for years, and I usually hit up every community sale at least some point. This was just a new neighborhood, I guess, or, or the first time they had a sale. And what you see here, we got the black Nintendo Wii, and this had the Wii Motion Plus in it, but it was the variant to where it had the Motion Plus as a separate attachment because, as you remember, or if you remember, the Motion Plus was not always built into the controller before you had to have, have a special attachment that plugged into the bottom of the, of the controller. And this was a boxed variant that I did not have. A lot of people know that I'm a huge fan of the Nintendo Wii, much like the original Xbox, and I like to collect obscure things for it, you know, variants being one of those things. Now you saw there was a few games in there, nothing crazy, but there was a copy of Sing It Family Hits, which, believe it or not, can go for about $18 to $20.00 depending on the market, and of course you saw a copy of Wii Sports, complete with the cardboard sleeve, which I always tell you guys to be on the lookout for, it's an easy $13 to $15 flip. I asked the dad when he came back out, I said, hey, how much were you wanting for all this? He said $25, bucks. I hit him with the $20 offer, and he took it, I'm going to get that back with the games, make some change on top of that when I get rid of the console, and be able to keep this awesome box that I did not have for my collection and actually as bad as it is I may have to keep the singing games if I do not have them in my collection I don't know it's a weird addiction I'm sure a lot of people out there can agree I don't know why but shovelware or or just really anything for the Wii I gotta, I gotta collect it it's just some of them are so wacky and wild it's cool to pick them up and look at them and just be like what the hell 
is going through Nintendo's minds. Not saying the the singing is bad. I just don't picture myself singing to the TV with the Nintendo Wii anytime soon. But for whatever reason, whatever is boiling in my veins makes me makes me do this. All right, guys, brace yourself because this is not only my favorite pickup of the week. It's my favorite pickup of the year because I am adding so much to my collection for a brand that I never get to find that much on this side of the world, and that is Sega stuff. And I got to give a big shout out to CJR because what people don't understand is I haven't been making you know game hunting videos, but for just a little over a year. And I used to watch other YouTube hunters. I still do. And I would watch his channel a lot. He got me into this. And I would always see him, you know, ask someone if they had games and they, they may mention that they had something. And he would always say, well, you know, if you bring it out, I can make you an offer on anything you don't play. And he would always follow it up, you know, and he would tell you that. If the people are willing to bring it out, usually, most of the time, you're able to buy it. And that is very accurate. It has helped me in many situations. It has helped me in this one specifically. So if you've never heard of CGR, I don't, I don't know how you could not have if you are into what we do. Check his channel out. He's like the king of game hunting. Him, Matt from Game Rally, they, just, they make good content. But anyways, this pickup right here. So the reason that I mentioned that slogan, the classic, if you bring it out, I'll, you know, I can make you an offer on it, is because that's what worked here. I pulled up to this yard sale, and the lady was, was sitting there nonchalant, you know, just ready to make some money. And I asked her, I said, hey, happen to have any old video games? Gave her the list, and she says, my husband has so many in the basement that I need him to get rid of. And that's when I say, I says, you know, if you can get him to, to bring them out, I can make an offer on anything that he that he doesn't want to play. And just I, look at this, guys. I'm watching this footage now, and I can't believe it. And I was the one that was there. Now, I will say it took a little convincing to actually get him to bring the box out because he did say, he's like, I got to go to work in 10 minutes. Can I get your phone number? I'll give you a call later. I never like to give my phone number. You know, I'll do it as a last resort, and maybe they might call you back, but you need to get that stuff then and there if you, if you want a chance at actually getting some games. So I said, is there any way I could just take a quick peek at it? I don't want to hold you up. You know, I was just being very kind, and, you know, I told him that I understood that I needed to go to work. And, you know, he actually, he was like, you know what? Let me go grab this stuff for you so you can have a quick look. Now, things started to take kind of like a left turn whenever we kind of started discussing pricing. Because, you know, I always, I always come out with, you know, what were you looking to get for this stuff? And him came off to me as, you know, I don't, I don't want that much. So, but, you know, you guys realize what this stuff is worth. This is a phenomenal lot of games right here. And I do the classic, let me pull out my wallet, and let me just give you what I got in there. Just for the fact that I know roughly what I had in there. And it was it was either going to be hit or miss with this. They were either going to take it, they were going to decline the hell out of it. So I pulled out my wallet, and I said, listen, I got $102 left on me. I've been to yard sales previous. I, I'm, I just don't have that much on me. And automatically I was looking at the wife and she's shaking her head at the husband she's like that that does not sound like enough money and I told her I was like it's not but it's all the money that I got on me I played that angle many times before where you know I only I only take a certain amount of money with me when I go flea marketing and yard selling usually somewhere between 150 200 bucks and if I need more I can always go and get it but there's been many times where I open up my wallet and I offer everything left had I had $150 on me, I probably would have offered that as well. But seeing as how I didn't, I saved a little bit of money here. And it, it's somewhat of a strategy that I use. There's been times where all I'm left with is $20. Hell, when I got Mega Man X3, I think all I had left on me was like $25, $26. I offered it all to them. And it works. Um, at least for me, it does. It, it Results may vary. And like, keep in mind, if I would have came up and said, you know, I'll give you $50 for this whole box... I guarantee you that woman would have probably kicked me out. So for me to show that vulnerability with, you know, opening my wallet, pulling everything out that I had and showing her the empty fold of it, she, you know, she accepted. But there was one condition and she she was real hesitant on me taking the whole box for $100. And I said, well, hey, man, I am not interested in this ColecoVision. I don't have one, but I just, I don't see myself wanting it. And I use that as a bargaining tool I said listen just let me get the NES and all the games you can keep the ColecoVision and we can square up you know for a hundred hundred and two dollars on this whole box and the lady accepted the lady was running this deal even though it was the husband stuff 
the wife was was basically the the moderator of it, which is understandable. And I told her, I said, if I had more money, I would give it to you. And I didn't. I gave them everything that I had, $102, and they were happy. And I got to keep those really awesome Coleco handhelds, the little electronical games that you see right there. I've never seen them before. They were made by Coleco, and I, I just thought they were very interesting. And I'm glad I picked them up when I did a little bit more research on them. But sometimes you, you got you to gotta do what you feel is right, and you will see that it pays off in the long run. So this last pickup right here is a funny one. This was like at 11 o'clock in, in the morning, and you know that's a little bit of a late time for yard selling, you know, to get some really serious scores. And I was on my way home because I had to get my bowling bag. I was going to go bowling with some friends. And I saw one last yard sale. I was like, you know what, I'm going to have to stop. And when I get there, I saw a few Xbox One games on the table. And, of course, I'm going to ask. I said, did you happen to have anything else older and he rebuttals with, you know what, you're like the fourth or fifth person that asked me today. And I completely understand that as late in the morning as it was, I guarantee he's been asked. Especially if he had games out on the table, that's a, that's a dead giveaway. If you see any game or any gaming related item, I mean, hell, even if it's just a cord, always ask. And I guess they didn't ask the right things because I'm still saying, well, is there anything else you can think of? And then I start mentioning, you know, handhelds, DSs, Game Boys. And that's what sparked his interest, and he was like, oh, you know what, in my drawer, I think I got a couple DS's and some games. So sure enough, he brings these out, and what was nice about this is that they were both in very good condition, not scratched at all. Um, this DS that you're seeing me hold, holding now is actually the Nintendogs edition, which is a nice surprise, and also the, the DSi was very nice condition. I believe that one was his, this one was his sister's that he said his sister gave to him, and... There was, a, there was some games, nothing insanely crazy, but I did pick up Mario Party DS as well as Dragon Quest. And once he handed me this stuff, I was like, hey man, if there's anything you can think of, and I'm still giving him just anything that I can think of. And then he, he starts thinking again, he's like, well, there might be a, a few 360 games, there might be some Wii games that I haven't brought out. And I was like, anything that you can find, I'm always happy to take a look at to see if it's something that I need or want. So after a little bit of time, he does return, and he doesn't have a huge handful of stuff, but he brings out some nice things, and I'm telling you, I was extremely grateful. You always got to show your appreciation when someone's willing to go inside and look, even though they've probably already done it a handful of times. So check this out. We got Dirt 3, the complete edition right there. That's surprisingly fairly high end for 360 games. It's worth, I don't know, maybe about 20 bucks as well as Sonic and Mario Olympic Games. And then, of course, I pick up the Wii Sports in the sleeve, like I always tell you guys to look out for. Now, as I mentioned before, they had some games already out, you know, that I guess that people looked at. They had some Xbox One games, and they were marked pretty high, and I assumed these games were going to be marked high, too. So instead of asking them how much they want per game, I just made a stack. So I put the DSs together, the two games that I wanted, all these games right here, these three, you know, the Wii Sports, uh, Mario and Sonic Olympic games, and Dirt 3. As well as there's this sealed cranium game over here that I asked her if she'd take two bucks on earlier. And I just, I just made a huge stack. And I said, how much were you thinking for this whole stack? I take individuality out of the equation. And she says, how about 30 bucks? I got all this for 25. I didn't, I didn't you know, want to completely haggle her down this was a phenomenal deal at that but i felt twenty dollars was right on the money for me and for this to be the last stop of the day at such a late time in the day it was a very good end to it so this is just another example of anytime you hear someone says you know you're the second third person however many people have asked before you can still get stuff it, it's it's rare and it's not going to happen that much at all but it is possible this is the perfect scenario right here they even said they sold a bunch of gamecube stuff a sale before maybe some cartridge based stuff as well and they were still able to go in there and pull out some things so this was a phenomenal last stop all right guys that is it i hope you all enjoyed the live pickups as always let me know what you guys found or what you got to say in the comments i try my best to read every single one of them and respond to the ones that i can as always guys take care and enjoy the rest of your day